Hallelujah. I want to thank Pastor for having us here and our First Lady and the Pastorate of the Church and everyone. It's so good to be in Arizona. Thank you so much. But we are certain that God is said to do something here today. Whilst the worship was going on, I sense that the presence of God is awesome here. Amen. And He's said to visit people in this place. Amen. And I trust God that your life will not remain the same. Amen. Pastor has said it, let your kids be beyond us. Let it be focused on Jesus. It is an error for you to come to church with your problem and go back again with your problem. I trust God that your life will change for good today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's just lift up our hands and just begin to worship God. Let's just begin to worship in Jesus name we are pray can we read the scriptures together while we are still standing Romans chapter 4 verse 17 to 22 Romans 4 17 to 22 it says, as it is written, Romans 4, 17 to 22, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Who contrary to hope, in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken so shall your descendants be and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory, glory to, God, to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. In Amen. the name of Jesus, Amen. we have read. You can have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Possessing your promises through thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Possessing your promises through, through thanksgiving. A lot of us have been believers for years. Um, some of us, the moment we give our life to Christ, they told us how easy it is that you are entering into a new economy. They told us that you are entering into a new kingdom. And in this kingdom, the possibilities is that Jesus has died for us and he has given us all things. Hallelujah. Amen. He has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. Now, we entered into this kingdom and yet it seems like the promises of God is not materializing in our lives the way we expected it to be. Do we have people like that in this place? Uh, 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 not just you. It, it has to do with a lot of every one of us. Scripture was telling us about Abraham in the scripture that we just read. Every one of us usually sing, Father Abraham has many sons. I am one of them. And so are you. You know, we admire the fact that Abraham was the father of faith. Scripture said so. But the truth was that the moment... The promises of God came the moment God met him and gave him promise. That was the beginning of Abraham's problem. The problem he had, the, 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 the day he had an encounter with God and the day God said, I want to do business with you, from that day his problem started. A lot of us usually tell God, God, use me. I want to bond for you. Some of us like this two Philosophy song, Spend My Life. 
Oh God, spend my life. I want to serve you. I want to give my all to you. But the moment you enter into such economy and God endorses the word because you actually had an encounter. You came to church and the anointing of God came so strong upon your life. You know, there were prophecies over your life. People had met you and said, this one will be great. You are the voice of your family. And then that was, that was the beginning of your problem. Abraham was in that economy. True. You know, sometimes, you know, God tells you this is who you will be. But you cannot relate what you look like with what he has told you. True. You cannot understand why your reality is not equating with the prophecy. Mm. You know, you, you, you can imagine. Sometimes you get into relationships that don't add up. You'll be like... I have been in this place for a long time and some things are not working. But yet, God told you that at so and so age, you will get married. Yeah. At so and so age, you will give birth to your kids, you give birth to your children. But you're wondering, why is that the promises of God does not equate my reality? Yeah. What's going on? He told you that this is where you will be at, the point, at a point in your life, but this is not what is going on in your life. Abraham, this was the case with Abraham, just like my husband was saying. I mean... God told him that he would be blessed. He told him that he would be father of many. How do you tell someone he's father of many nations and doesn't have children? Mm. How can you even equate it? So, in other words, your reality is sensible, but your prophecy does not need your sense. Mm, true. Your reality is sensible. That's why your human sense can comprehend it. Mm. That's why your human sense can absorb it. That's why people around you may understand. Flesh will always understand the reality. <laughs> but, but flesh can never understand the prophecy. True. So your re no matter how much you reason, it cannot equate the prophet. It cannot, you, you can't absorb the prophet. You can't fully understand it. That was the place of Abraham. How do you tell me that I am going to be father of many nations... But my reality, I don't have a child. Mm. I am not just, you know, there's, there's something about, you know, you not having a child and you have age to have one. Yeah. This one, he wasn't having a child and he was not, he was not even in the right age. He wasn't young. He didn't have the good body. Biologically, it, he was possible. dead. It was impossible. It was impossible for him to, so, so the prophecy of God comes upon impossibilities. Yeah. The prophecy of God comes upon impossibility. That which is impossible, and hear God say, this is who you will be. You cannot understand it. Yeah. This was the case of Abraham. How do you tell a Sarah who has passed menopause that she was going to give birth? How? As how? It was impossible. But we realize that prophecy and reality are not equal. True. True. Prophecy and reality can never be equal because prophecy has to go beyond the natural. Mm. So, but reality is operates in the natural realm. Mm. The, the reality requires your natural economy, your natural thinking, but prophecy requires something supernatural. Amen. So the first point we need to get from this scripture is that the promises of God will come to you when it seems nothing, nothing. is happening <laughs> in your life. Can True. I take that again? The promises of God will come to you when it seems nothing, nothing is happening in, in your, your life. life. We can see that in Romans chapter 4, verse 17. He said, I have made it's you a father, father of many nations. nations in the presence of him who he believed. God. <laughs> <laughs> he said, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which be not Exist. as do. They exist. The promises of God will always come to you. And when you see what God has promised your family, your children, you don't look like it. Mm -hmm. yes. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. But God says, I'm with you. Mm. I remember when we were getting married, we, we told ourselves that we're going to make a covenant to God. And we told ourselves that our lives, we're going to, we're, we're going to be role models. You know, so this was like 2013. 2013, yeah. You know, May 18th, 18th, after our marriage, we went to the redemption camp. We actually went there for our honeymoon. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Sorry. Because we told ourselves that when we get to the redemption camp, the money that they gave us for... Spread us. The money that they gave us for our wedding, wedding. during the wedding... Yeah. We want to covenant it. So we took a percentage of it. I went to the redemption camp to go covenant this morning. 
So if you've been to Redemption Camp, you know that there's this particular house that the Geo stayed before, and now it's like a tourist center. So we went there, we went to Daddy Gio's bedroom, and we placed the money there, and we knelt down, and we began to pray. Mm. We prayed together as a couple. Yeah. And the truth was that in that point, we had an encounter with God. And the encounter was clear and vivid. God told us that he was going to make us a voice in yeah. our generation. It mm. was very clear. Mm -hmm. God told us that we're going to be role models. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And when I got married to my wife, I was nothing. Mm. I was, the only property I had was a laptop. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was sure. squatting in my pastor's house when I told my wife I was going to get married to her. Yeah, true. So she gave me a yes and my faith, we got married. So in that faith, I went to redemption camp and I went to go and place a seed at the altar, trusting God for the miraculous. And we heard God, and God said, I'm going to make you guys role models. I don't know how God was going to do it. I don't know. What, I, I, I do not know his ways. Mm. So we came out of that place. We were so excited because of the prophecy. Has prophecy ever come to your life? And you're so excited about it. Mm. Said so the promises just come. You are just so excited. Mm. Pastor said, can we sow to a particular project? You sow into it, believing God that something is going to happen. Because pastor said, because you have sown, God is going to open doors for you. I say, amen, I've given God. <laughs> so also it was with Abraham. God wanted to do business with Abraham by collecting from Abraham. Mm. Your son, your holy son, the one whom you love. Mm. He knew where his heart was and he asked for that thing. Mm. We were so excited and we left. And we didn't know that that was the beginning of our problems. That prophecies, when the devil knows that there's a prophecy over your life, he's not going to fold his hands and watch it come to pass. Sure. That when there's prophecy over your life, you've just automatically tied yourself. Mm. Because battles, the hell will let loose because they don't want to see it come to pass. Sure. It was the beginning. All of a sudden, we started having issues in our marriage. Myself and my wife will oh, quarrel. Who oh, quarrel, who oh, fight, not physical fight. I never raised my hand on my wife for 10 years. Who oh, fight, hallelujah. Who oh, argue, I'll say, this is the direction, these chairs are blue. My wife will say, they are black. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That was the former woman. No? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, everything was, we could not understand what was happening. Mm. But God said we were going to be role models and our marriage is about to tear apart. Mm. We're having issues. I went to God to go and pray. That was when the evil, I could not hear God concerning it. I, 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 I said, did I marry a witch? <laughs> and she was looking at me and said, did I marry a demon? What is happening? Then all of a sudden, in that, in that, in that chaos, God told us, now you guys are going to start windows. Because we started windows just three months into our wedding, into our marriage. Yes. So we started windows and all. And I went to go and I, I did contracts. So God bless me, I made some money. So I bought all my equipment that we needed to start this ministry. And I went to Asaba. All the equipment that were in the car, I went to go and do a job for somebody. As I came back into the car, I'm robbers. They buckled the car and they cleared all my equipment. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It was from one to another. I said, no, I will not let the devil defeat me. I borrowed money again, went to, the, went to a cooperative. I borrowed cooperative bank, borrowed money again, started again. And we kept pushing, and we kept pushing, and we kept pushing. And one day, this time our robbers came into our house. We were in the room, sleeping. And my wife tapped me and said, it seems that there's somebody walking in our house. And before I could say Jack Robinson, they broke the door with guns. And they matched my head. And they cleared everything, everything. again. We were now in perpetual debt. On Sunday, I couldn't preach because I was pastoring a, a youth church. 
in the redeemed Christian Church of God. I couldn't preach that Sunday. I, I, I invited a pastor. I told him to please come and preach. So I sat down. He was preaching. And I became the topic of the sermon. And he started preaching. He said, when problem comes your way, maybe it's because you do not pay tight. He will sit and look at me and turn his face. <laughs> when problem comes your way, maybe you have sinned. Yeah. You are sleeping with the girls in church and God wants to punish you. When problem comes your way, maybe you cannot read, you don't know how to read your Bible effectively. You lack a prayer life. He was saying all these things. Tears dropped from my eyes. I held my wife's hand. He looked at us and saw us crying. He thought it was the message that was touching us. But he didn't know we were asking ourselves, God, why would you bring us to this point of shame? I thought they said that when you serve Jesus, it will make all things beautiful. But why is it that from the day prophecies came, it became war? The first time I decided as well, we decided as well too, that it was time to start our international trip within that same period. My wife was pregnant for our second child. So I was to go to Sierra Leone for, 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 for a missionary trip. I was in Lagos, about to take flights the next day. I was sleeping at night, my wife was in labor, and I called the doctor. How is everything? So much excitement. I, I called around 3 a.m. How is everything? How is everything? What's the good news? He said, we lost the child. He said, we lost the child. I said, I don't understand. I spoke with my wife in an hour, an hour ago. And he told me everything was well. And it's going to be safe. And what happened? Hey, I can't explain. The uterus burst. Blah, blah, blah. The baby came out. The baby drowned. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, God. I came back from Lagos. Came back to Benin to come bury this beautiful girl. Yeah. The next day, got up again and entered flight. I went for a missionary trip to go and see serve the same God. <laughs> when prophecies is upon your head, the devil will do anything in his capacity to fight it. Prophecy attracts warfare. True. 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 So, you must come to the point where you must be able to wage a good warfare. Mm over prophecies. Apostle Paul told Timothy, yes. he said, wage a good warfare. It's good because you're already victorious despite the fact that there are a lot of calamities on the way. Mm. We told ourselves we're not going to give up. We'll be fighters. True. Many of you here, there are promises over your life. Many of you here have been serving God so faithfully and sometimes you just... Why am I giving my all? Let me let me go and go also and make so much money and give so much time and maybe by time make so much money and everything. I've been serving God and there's nothing to show for and everything. Listen now, it's the devil that is trying to sell something over you. Trying to distract you from what he's about to do in your life. He knows very well that there is something about your life and your destiny. Sure. Some of you, it's not even about you, it's about your children. Mm -hmm. The reason why there's an hardship is not about you. The reason why Joseph and Mary decided to start, they became fugitive. It was because of Jesus that they carried. Carry, carry. Your, seed. They, your seed. Your seed. Their seed. So there are certain battles you are facing. You are wondering, why is this battle? It could be because of your seed. But you must wage what? A good warfare. Number two. The fulfillment of prophecies has to be by faith. Yes. The fulfillment of prophecies has to be by faith. Yes. Scripture said in Romans chapter 4 verse 18 or 19 or so. It said, has not been weak in faith. Abraham wasn't weak in faith. He did not consider his own body mm already dead mm. since he was but a hundred years 
old. Mm. <laughs> and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Mm. Yes. Listen now, you want the prophecies over your life to come to pass, it is by faith. Somebody say by faith. faith. How old is faith? Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Mm. Faith is believing God even when you cannot see, see the direction. Faith is walking with God without direction, without a plan, without mm. program. Faith is you acknowledging God in all your ways. Yes. <laughs> Faith is you not calculating and saying, oh God, my time is going. By now I should have been married. All oh, my mates are getting married. What is happening now? Mm. Okay. There's this guy. Actually, the guy is tall, dark, and I'm so maybe we can uh, just start something and just marry after a marriage is marriage. But yet, you know, this is not the will of God for your life. Mm. But you want to cut corners. Sure. But you want the prophecies of God to materialize in your life. You must walk by faith. Yeah. Faith means that I am not walking based on my will, mm. but the will of my master. No walking based on my human wisdom. You see, your human wisdom cannot even be compared to the foolishness of God. True. It cannot. Faith will never make sense, but faith will always make miracles. Mm. True. It will never make sense. sense. Faith is senseless. It doesn't make sense, but it makes miracles. miracles. Faith commands the supernatural. So you, the only thing Abraham had to do was just to believe. Believe or nothing. That's faith. <laughs> so you don't need to have any evidence, but you are believing. Mm. That's the truth. He did not have any evidence, but he was just believing. Because, mm. you see, until you trust God with your 100%, he cannot be a director of your parts. Yeah. You need to trust him 100%. If my husband doesn't feel my trust, he cannot lead me effectively. True. Even in marriage, it's the same thing. If he does not feel my trust, some men complain and say, eh, my wife doesn't obey, she doesn't do this. She doesn't do that. It's not because what they're trying to say is that it's not because you're not respectful, you don't feel, so you can respect God and not trust him. Yeah. It's not the same thing. Yeah. So it, when you trust someone, the person knows the prophecy that the person has spoken over your life, what spoken becomes fulfilled yeah. when the person feels your trust. Mm. How will you feel? God is not a foolish God. He's not foolish. How would you feel if you are the one? Somebody does not have children. And the person, you told the person, the person is going to become the father of many nations. Even when he conceived Isaac after everything, God told him to carry Isaac, to go and sacrifice. He went. God, when God comes to a point when he can see your choice, he moves realms for you. Yeah. He begins to command things to happen for you. Because, I mean, he sat on the throne. Abraham was still moving mm. despite everything. True. He wasn't shaking. There were moments, I'm sure, where he cried, probably. Mm. There were moments where, you know, he felt like, oh my God, is God real? But he kept on. He believed God on nothing. Yeah. Faith receivers are fighters. Yeah. As when I said, they stole everything from us. We pushed. Mm. We were warring. For you to be able to war in this kingdom, you must have faith. True. You need a tool called faith to be able to move. Mm. You need a tool called faith to be able to keep on praying consistently about a particular thing. Mm. God, and God told me, and God said, yes, it will happen this year. The year has passed, and God, Joseph dreamed and dreamt again. <laughs> Even in prison, he was still dreaming. Yeah. The dream in him did not stop. Even mm. when they made promises and it didn't look like it, he didn't stop dreaming. Kept dreaming. He kept dreaming. He remembered that he carried a presence so he could not give up. He knew. Mm. He knew young enough that there was a prophecy over his head, so he kept at his faith. Oh, the devil will do things to steal your faith because he knows that faith is a weapon. Mm. When you have, it's like a farmer or whatever, you cannot go to the farm without a tool. Mm. So also, if you want to command things in your life, you want the prophets over your life to be fulfilled, imagine if you are stopped because they robbed us. We will not hear of the windows again. That's true. You will not hear of the windows again. That's the truth. After we have they've stolen everything, and we kept on pushing, yeah. you know, we had to reshoot a video, you know, and, I think God told me to marry you. That's where it came from. That's where it came from. We were distressed when we shot. We shot the first time. The, something happened <laughs> to the lost, audio. We lost, we lost the videos. Yeah, we lost the video. Shot the second time, lost the videos. Had to I go to a friend's studio. And that was where God told me to marry it came and went, went viral. It surely went viral to the point that our website crashed because of traffic all over the world. The devil is aware of your season. He doesn't know God's promise for your doesn't life, know but God's he has promises. the capacity he to, know, peep. to He peeps. 
he can sense. He can go into a family and sense that there's a glory in this family. And you start looking for ways to fight it. True. He can sense. Yes. And at the point where he was fighting, our views were only 13, 10 family members that watched the video. <laughs> we kept on pushing. We heard something. You need what you hear, keep at it. That's true. Yes. Let your faith become a fence that guides what you have heard. Yeah. Faith is the tool that protects your fence. It's a protective weapon. Mm. We had, the only thing that worked for us that we had, we had something and we moved with it in faith. We kept on pushing, we kept on fighting to the point that God told me to marry you went viral because the devil knows that there's an announcement waiting for you. Yeah. But you must have faith to protect your prophecy so it can bring about a fulfillment over your life. And number three, thanksgiving. The Bible says in Romans 4, verse 20 or so now, mm. media can help me. He did not waver at the promises of God no through unbelief. He never had a point where he mm. needed to question God. Mm -hmm. God, do you exist? Mm -hmm. God, this problem I'm going through, are you really real? God, if you do not bless me, if I don't marry this, me, I'll not serve you again. Mm. If I join choir again, uh, <laughs> If I come to, I will not, but if we pastor call me, I will not pick his car again. Church now scam. He didn't get to that point. He said he did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. So what it meant was that when he goes out and his friends say, ah, you know, people like to do it, you know, we have just one daughter. So in Africa, if you have one daughter, you have a problem. Yes, yeah, so. sir. You know, they will say, Ah, it is well, don't worry, the other one will come. Are you, do you know if we're okay with one? <laughs> you, you, are God, ah, you, you need another one. You like that? So I could imagine how, how they were looking at Abraham. Abraham. That was preaching faith, father of faith. <laughs> and he's going out and they say, ah, they say, ah, that's the man. Hey, yeah, we pity him. He doesn't get one child, though. Mm -hmm. One. And he goes out and says, wow. Praise the Lord, my name is Abraham. I'm the father of many nations. He kept going everywhere, confessing that thing. They looked at him and they were laughing at him. He wants to introduce himself. He goes to an office and says, ah, Who are you? My name is Abraham. I'm the father of many nations. Mm. He was strengthened in faith. Mm. Mm. He never allowed his reality be his prophecy. Mm -hmm. He never allowed facts be his prophecy. Sure. He allowed faith. The word is giving glory to God. It was every day. Thanksgiving does, should not stop. You don't retire on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving has no condition. There was no condition for him to thank God, but he thanked him. That's true. You, you, you know, it's easy for you to thank God when you have a good job. Mm. It's easy for you to thank God when you have found the person. It's easy to thank God when you have married. Some people end their Thanksgiving after getting the gift. Mm. This man thanks God with or without anything. Yeah. You, because, because that's how it should be. That's the posture. You know, seven sons thank God without condition. There That's was true. no condition for his thanksgiving. Yeah. There was no condition for his gratitude. There was no condition. It's easy for me to thank my husband when he has bought me a car. But without a car, I should have a posture of thanksgiving. I should thank him for even being my husband. Yeah. He thanked God for being God to him. Mm. That was enough for him. He will go out. He said he's giving glory. So he did not hibernate on thanksgiving. Yeah. He did not thank God today. You know, sometimes we need the instruments to thank God. <laughs> sometimes the drums have to sit right for us to thank God. Mm. Sometimes you need to have the latest clothes to be able to thank God. Mm. Your lipstick has to sit so that you can thank mm. God. Oh, your pastor has to call you so that you can come to church and thank God. Mm. But Abraham did not need any pastor. Yeah. He, did not need, he had an attitude of thanksgiving by himself and for himself. That's what God is calling us out for. We need to give him glory despite the situation. Wait or without the situation, we need to give him thanks. He was strengthened, he was strengthened in, in faith, faith, giving glory, giving glory to God. My circumstance cannot affect my praise. I know in this country, depression is now is is, is now a uh, is a we have people that take up who are depressed. Now. It's a profession, right? People can just wake up and commit suicide and all those stuff. If you don't know God, you don't know God. You don't know the ways of God. Mm. The 
people have read in scripture, they are, they are candidates for depression. True. They are qualified to be depressed. <laughs> Abraham, at 90, God said, you will be a father of many nations. That's depressing. Is it not for you to go and die? Mm-hmm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, it is time you need to bow to this God. And they said, we will not bow. And they took them and they want to go and put them in the furnace. The furnace. furnace. Yes. But yeah, these people refuse to bow. So even if. Even if my God does not answer us, we will not bow. Even what if. a realm of fellowship God is desirous of us as a church. Mm. That God, whether you bless me or not, I will not bow. Mm. You are still God. Whether I have food to eat or not, I will not bow. You are still God. Whether I get a spouse or not. Whether there's a spouse or not, I will not bow. You are still God. People church. see you dancing in church. They don't know they why know, you dance. They know your label. Mm-hmm. They know nothing is happening in your life. And you are dancing, but they don't know the realm at which you are operating for. Mm-hmm. That you have a deep relationship with your master. Mm-hmm. I told you that when we're getting married, I'm going to round up with this now. I told you that when we're getting married, I didn't have money. We went to go and meet my father-in-law. I said, I want to marry your daughter. He looked at me and said, hey. He said, I will leave. This is the man you want to marry. She said, yes. You love him? He said, yes. Say, oh. <laughs> I knew what he was looking at. Look at his skin. This poor man will dry up and make this guy black. <laughs> Say, ew! So we went to my and I said, Daddy, we want a very small wedding and all the stuff. Just small traditional marriage and very small wedding. He said, well, am I the one that says you should be poor? <laughs> it's true. Am I the one that says you should be poor? What did he say? And senior sister got married we big. shot gone in the she village. <laughs> Your canopy is everywhere. Everything was big. You are coming here saying small. I said, sir, it's my principal. He said, the hey, principal, you are poor. <laughs> I said, it's not about poor. So my wife went to go and meet him. I said, daddy, please. We want a change. We want a change. And I, he said, no. I'm standing on my ground. I'm a traditional man. You cannot shift me. I mean, in, in, in Nigeria, for those of you that don't understand, when you are a village man or a villager or a king or something, you know, you must follow the tradition. And nobody can change it. Why? Because everybody within the community, your brothers and all, you are eating from their own money. They, they must eat from your own. So you must go by the tradition. He told my wife, he said, we must go by the tradition. My wife came and said, so what are we going to do? How are we going to shift this whole thing and all? I said, sweet, can you just relax? God has begun a good work in our life. He's going to complete it. Let's just give him thanks. Let's just be appreciating. So we kept that team, started planning the wedding without money. <laughs> started planning the wedding without money. It was two weeks to the wedding. I didn't have money to see pay for the canopy and everything. And I was close to my uh, uh, father-in-law's city. I was just around with my wife. You know, we're just around the city because that was where we were having our uh, marital counseling. So I got a call from my father-in-law. Two weeks to our wedding. He said, oh, where are you? I said, I'm in Asaba. He said, wow, you are close. He said, tomorrow is your traditional wedding. I said, no, sir, it's two weeks' time. I said, he said, no. I'm saying tomorrow. Is your traditional wedding. Go and get the list I sent to you because the list I couldn't even afford it. He said, The list I sent to you, get anything from the list and everything. I'll come. Don't come with crowd. I don't want crowd, everything. Come. Where is Anne Willie? I said, She's in, in, in with me. Yeah. He said, Okay, you guys come and everything. I called my pastor because my pastor was in the city too. I told him, I said, Look at what my father in law is saying. He said, Really? Your father in law said that. I said, yeah. I said, yes, sir. He said, okay. Ah, are you sure it's normal? Does he have any psychiatric? Because this is abnormal. I said, okay, call your father-in-law because I don't trust him. Call your father-in-law and tell him that you are going to come with a photographer. At least to cover it. So that in case he wakes up, 
Maybe it was under the influence of alcohol. <laughs> they said it. And he went to say, I, I did not give it my daughter. I said, oh, Daddy, look at evidence. Look at the pictures. We snap pictures. So I called my father and I said, Daddy, please, can I come with a photographer? He said, yes, come. But don't come with any other person. So we got ready the next day. I didn't have native to wear. I was on jeans for my traditional wedding. My wife was on jeans. Because we were not in our city. We couldn't plan. My mom was like, my mom is a teacher. You know, you know, Nigerian mom. She said, ah, we are married tomorrow. I said, we are going to use bus to carry all my teachers to come. I said, mommy, relax. I said, small wedding, you are talking about bus. <laughs> she said, so I will not. I said, mommy, don't worry. Send your blessings. There's a representative here for us. We go to my father-in-law's house that morning. We sat down. He sat down. He was fidgeting. He said, how you guys doing? I said, are you guys ready? I said, yes. He said, where's the list? I gave him the list. He said, okay. Um, wh what did you come with? I said, sir, the truth is that I didn't have time to prepare. You know, you were the one that said we should come. I was actually preparing for two weeks' time. He said, what do you have? I said, just 30,000. I said, bring it. He collected it. He said, let me tell you something. Do you know what I'm doing? What I'm doing? I said, no, sir. He said, two nights ago, I told you he's a traditional man. He said, two nights ago, I was sleeping. And the angel of the Lord appeared to me in my sleep. This is not a strong Christian. As I went, this thing happened. He has driven my mother-in-law out of the house. And he has a side chick in his house. But the angel of the Lord bypassed that to appear to him. And said, my son Oiz and my daughter Anweli, don't stress them. Whatever they say they want, give to them. Or he said he saw that in his dream that an angel appeared to him and said, call them now and conduct their wedding for them. He said, that's why I'm doing it. He said the angel told him that he should get only communion and present only communion for us and pray for us and release us. Traditional marriage in Nigeria. He went inside, got holy communion, gave us holy communion, prayed for us, took a little money from the 30,000 naira and blessed us. He didn't even take the 30,000. <laughs> he took just a little from it and blessed us. No yam, no oil, no palm oil. Do this old stuff, paparazzi. I said, I will go to the village myself and settle every other thing. I, I, I have said to you, you are already married. You guys can go. And that's how we did our marriage. <laughs> Listen now. The Bible says the hands of the kings are in his hands and he tones it wherever he wills. But you want to push the hands of God to turn the hands of kings in your favor, then you mustn't be depressed. You must be a man of gratitude. You must remember where you are coming from, the faithfulness of God. The devil will always come to tell you, ah, God is not faithful. And ah, look at what is happening to you in America. Listen there. There are people in Nigeria trying to come to America. That is a testimony in the first place. Oh, you have not got in your paper. Look at your frustrated. There are people that wish to be like you. The devil will always blind you and make you feel that nothing is happening in your life. You want to get the best of God? Switch to thanksgiving. Can we rise up on our feet this morning?